the very important conversation with the chairman on this GDP day. The headline, as I mentioned, U.S. economy grew faster than expected last quarter on firm demand. And so we turn to the chairman, Jared Bernstein, live from the White House, of course, chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Mr. Chairman, welcome back to Bloomberg Radio. It's great to see you and appreciate the time here. This is a beautiful headline for you. The first word I heard in the newsroom when I walked in this morning was Goldilocks. But then I talked to Stuart Paul at Bloomberg Economics, and he says, but Joe, it's just all about inventory rebuilding, that this is their one-time factors, prices went up a little bit. You need to slow, slow the enthusiasm. And so I ask you, Jared, how we should be interpreting these data? Well, it's a great question. First of all, always great to be with you, uh, Joe. Um, you don't want to over torque or over index on any one report. And so what we did here at the Council of Economic Advisors, and you can see the blog on our website, is we, we looked at where GDP has gone since President Biden took office uh, it, it, in comparison to a couple of prominent forecasts. And uh, it just kept, it, you know, our, our GDP path just kept beating the forecast. Uh, you well remember mm. uh, predictions that we would be in a recession or a deep recession by yes, now. Indeed. And yet the strong labor market, strong consumer spending, and in this report, you know, some really nice business investment. Uh, so I, I, I take the point about inventory. It's the most volatile uh, component of the uh, of the report. Uh, but even if you shave those by half, you still beat expectations. So solid report. Hmm. Solid report. And it adds to the mosaic here, uh, if I can use that term, that we're seeing as a potential soft landing. You know it's my job. I've been asking you this for a year, I think, on a monthly, if this is it. And it sure feels like it, Jared. Am I wrong? Well, I I, I think that the uh, the the way to look at that question is from the perspective of of where we are and what where we are says about where we're going. So where we are is we have a job market that has uh, almost since this president has gotten here since it was such a, a strong intention of his to get back to full employment as soon as possible, that has consistently, persistently been by uh, in the neighborhood of full employment. And as inflation has eased, that generates real wage gains. That supports uh, strong consumer spending, about 68% of our GDP. So underlying this report, this is kind of my same point about not, you don't have to over torque on, on one report as significant as a beat as it is to to understand the fact that we have some very nice momentum, a kind of a, a perpetual motion forward kind of story with strong labor market easing prices, real wage gains, real incomes rising, mm -hmm. feeding into uh, good consumer spending. That in turn helps to get investors uh, uh, back back into the into the act. <clears throat> and I do think that that is very much the characteristic of a steady, solid, ongoing recovery. Call it whatever you want, but that's that's the way I yeah. I, I would take it. Yeah, well, but it kind of sounds like it. Although uh, I will ask you about government spending, uh, Jared, quite a bit, contributing more here to GDP compared to the first three months of the year. Defense spending, a big part of it, helped to offset uh, a lower residential investment. Is that sustainable? I think when you're talking about sustainability of government spending, you're really not talking about a month or a quarter or even a year. You're talking about the long term. I mean, the sustainability question in the near term is really a question of how liquid is the market for uh, borrowing for um, for selling government bonds. And you know, the auction. You look at the auctions, look at the bid covers, and you know, you see that 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 those are still very robust, and that there's uh, persistent and deep global demand for U.S. debt. That's all great. But the sustainability question asks, what about over the long term? If outlays uh, continue to outrun uh, receipts, revenues, um, uh, eventually that arithmetic uh, can be extremely constricting, especially if you believe we're in somewhat of a higher interest rate environment so that debt service uh, is pressured. And that's why our budget in the long term over 10 years uh, has very significant deficit reduction based on both revenue increases at the very top of the scale and 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 cutting spending. Um, so I think the sustainability question is a longer term question. You have to address it. Our budget does that, but we need Congress to work with us on it. Well, yeah, Jared, they just went home. <laughs> um, I'm try <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the next move here there because go. they're going to come back in September. We're going to be talking about the potential for a government shutdown all over yeah. again. History repeats itself. 
How should we be preparing ourselves for this? It's a great, it's a really great point. I mean, just, well, Jared, they just went home kind of says a lot, right? Because you're like, I'm telling you yes. a very clear arithmetic way forward here. You know, this is not rocket science. It's it's pluses and minuses, you know, with some interest rates and some compounding thrown in. And if people are not going to, if, if members of policymakers are not going to take this seriously, of course, we're going to have a problem. Look, I am not going to get political here because that's not m my job. But I, I do think mm -hmm. that people who are concerned about this should look at the record and at the budgets uh, of what people are proposing. Now, you know, we know that the uh, the, the guy we're running against wants to uh, uh, pass an unfunded uh, $5 trillion tax cut. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we know that the, the other side, the Republicans, have you know, signed pledges never to raise revenues. And um, the only spending they've cut has been in some very narrow areas. So, again, I think look to the budgets and you get a sense of who's serious and who isn't. You know, I've been asking you for uh, for months and months, a couple of years, I guess, Jared, about what the economy would look like for Joe Biden in a second term. I can't ask you that anymore. But when you look at the trajectory of data here, I want to ask you what the Fed's going to be doing. But if you map this out six to nine months, and Kamala Harris is the next president. What will she be inheriting? Well, I think one answer to that is to look at a document that probably hasn't gotten a lot of attention, which is the uh, mid-session review that we published last Friday, because that has our forecast in it. It's nothing revolutionary. It's pretty much a similar forecast if you looked at blue chip uh, or CBO, for that matter. A few differences here and there. But that's our answer to that question. And, and it says... Pretty much, you know, what you're seeing now, steady, stable growth around inflation back to something that looks like the target. And it's that latter part that's so important. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm giving a speech next week uh, where I'm going to focus on um, the almost round trip of inflation. The fact that inflation, you know, went up to peak at uh, 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 you know, nine, nine plus percent in, in June of 22. We're now looking at three percent year over year. We'll learn more about PC inflation tomorrow. Um, but, we, you know, if you listen to the language of the Fed, they're they're pretty much telling you that they're, they view themselves as on their way back to the target and that the kind of pause in disinflation that characterized Q1 seems to be largely behind us and that the forces of disinflation are in play again. And I think that's key for the economy that uh, a President Harris uh, would inherit, one where inflation was was back down and some of the uh, uh, factors that um, that led to the uh, to the high inflation, uh, particularly uh, uh, snarled supply chains and and misalignments uh, of that type uh, relative to the pandemic are, are are solidly behind us. Pretty remarkable answer, Jared. So the timing sounds like it could be impeccable for uh, a Kamala Harris presidency if she wins on target. Is what you're saying? I know your time is tight. I, mean, I, I want to ask you about. Just go ahead. I, I think that you know every forecast has a confidence interval around it, but that is, I think okay. that, that is, I think the you know the central the central forecast. Yeah. I love that term, confidence interval. Joe Biden <laughs> spoke to the nation last evening. Jared, you've known him for a really long time. Were you at the White House last night? How did you watch the speech? Yeah, I I, uh, I was around and. Um, extremely moving and you're right uh, I, I I've been close to the president for decades um, the guy we saw last night is the guy I've known and loved for a long time it's been an absolute uh, it continues to be an absolute honor to work with him and I should tell you that the message from him to uh, uh, our team is uh, we are not done folks uh, we got you know, six months of uh, of work to do under this president where we're going to continue delivering for the American people. Uh, so, uh, you know, my, my shirt sleeves remain rolled up. <laughs> that would imply then that you are confident he can finish the job. You, you see him and talk to him more than most Americans. Oh, unquestionably. He is, uh, he is ready to get back to work. He's here. He's, uh, meeting today, as you just discussed, the uh, foreign leaders and, uh, uh, on the economy. Um, uh, I know he liked that GDP report, so uh, he and I will have more to say about that. And uh, he is, as I said, um, our, our marching orders are very clear. Uh, we're going to keep building on the progress we've made thus far. we got a great GDP report. We have inflation coming down. 
uh, 16 million jobs and, and counting, manufacturing, domestic. Oh, you know, one of the message from him is implement, implementation, implementing the Infrastructure Act, the CHIPS Act, the uh, yeah. Inflation Reduction Act. That's real work. And, and Biden has always been an implementation guy. He is not a president who says, sign the bill and, and let's move on. He wants to make sure that what we said we're going to do for the American people is what we're going to do. So our work is, is, is still cut out for us.